Hello my friends, I'm Clover and this is Genuinely Approachable Sudoku and today we're solving The Absent-Minded Commuter by Philip Newman. So this is a Kropke pair Sudoku, so we're placing the digits 1 through 9 once each in each row, each column, and each outline 3 by 3 region. And then we also have some dots in the grid, some of them are black, some of them are white. When you see a black dot, the two digits on either side of it are in a 1 to 2 ratio, so one of them is twice as big as the other one. And when you see a white dot, one of them is one greater than the other one, so they are consecutive. For instance, 2 and 3, or 4 and 5, or 7 and 8, anything like that. Because it's Kropke pairs, and not just traditional Kropke, not all of the possible dots in the grid have necessarily been given, so there might be other pairs of digits that are adjacent that are in a 1 to 2 ratio, or that are consecutive that don't have a dot. So you need to focus on if you have a dot, then you do know something about those digits, but if you don't have a dot, that doesn't necessarily tell you anything. So we're going to start here. So the there's only one sequence of digits in Sudoku that has um, a 1 to 2 ratio for four digits in a row, and that's 1, 2, 4, 8. So the middle two digits here have to be 2 and 4, and these guys have to be 1 and 8. And the same thing is going to apply right here. And so we know that the 6 can't go in those cells, it has to go there. The 3 can't go in those cells, it has to go here. Now there are only two ways to do three digits in a row that are all in a 1 to 2 ratio with each other. It's either 1, 2, 4, or 2, 4, 8, so the central digit has to be 2 or 4. And these have to be from 1, 2, 4, 8. We can eliminate one option here, because if this were a 1, then both of these digits would actually have to be 2s in the same region. So that can't be a 1. Right here, the middle digit again is 2 or 4. However, there's already an 8 in this region. So this can't be 2, 4, 8. It has to be 1, 2, 4. So we can place our 2 in the middle. And for several reasons, um, the most obvious of which is the fact that there is a 1 already in this row. This guy can't be a 1, so that's a 4. And now that we've placed this 1, we can work our way back by placing an 8 there. And we can eliminate our 8 here also. So now we have a 2, 4 pair. We can eliminate 2 and 4 there. And we can also eliminate 1 because there's a 1 in the column. So that takes care of this. So now this digit has to be either 1 or 3. This 8 here resolves which way around this is going to go, and the one I just placed resolves that into a 3 rather than a 1. This is the only position for 9 in this column. There's a 3 in this column now, so that's going to have to be a 5. And that's going to be a 6 to finish off the column. These will be 1, 5, and 7. Uh, these are going to be 3, 6, and 9, and that makes our last digit there a 5. And these are going to be 3, 6, and 7 to finish off this region. Now, this is our, um, I guess, second to last pair of digits that are in a 1 to 2 ratio that are marked here. They can't have a 6, they can't be 3 and 6. This digit can't be either 1 or 2, so it can't be a 1 and 2. And this digit can't be either 4 or 8, so it can't be 4 and 8. So this has to be 2 and 4, that's the only remaining possibility. And then 4 is only next to 3 or 5, but 3 already appears in the row, so that's going to be a 5. And this has to be either a 1 or a 3. This pair can't have a 1 in it, can't have a 4 in it, so the only remaining possibility is that it is a 3-6 pair. That is going to make this into a 1. That's not a 1, that's not a 1 or a 5, because those are in the row, so now we can resolve these three. Now, we can't have a 6 here, so that 6 we quarter marked is finally going to work out. Um, our last digit in this row will be a 9. Our last digits in this row will be 3 and 7, which we can place now because of the 3 in this column. And here we're going to need a 7 and 8 to finish the region. Here we need 3, 5, and 9. That's not a 3, and that is not a 5. Let's take a look at this region. So we have four digits that are consecutive, and none of them are 4. So they can't be like 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 3, 4, 5, because that would give us two 4s in the region. So they have to be greater than 4. So it's either 5, 6, 7, 8, or 6, 7, 8, 9. However, 5, 6, 7, 8 can't work, because the lowest digit would have to be either here or here and there is already a 5 in that row. So they must be 6, 7, 8, 9. And because of this 9, they have to go this way around. That resolves the 7 and the 8. There's going to be a 2 to finish off this region. This region, um, that's just, it's going to have to be a 2 because 2 can't go in any of those cells. So this is now a 1, 3, 5 to finish the region. 
There's a 1 and 3 in this row now, so that's a 5. That's a 1, 3 pair. These have to be from 7, 8, and 9, and there's an 8 and 9 in that row, so that's a 7. And my last two remaining digits here are going to be 4 and 5. And in fact, those are consecutive. And the funny thing is, those are in fact consecutive um, with both 3 and 6. I'll just have to figure out which way around those go as we finish the puzzle. So let's do a bit of Sudoku to finish up. This row needs a 6, 7, and 9. This row needs 1, 3, 6, and 9, and neither of them can be 3. That also can't be a 6, that can't be a 1. So now we have a 6, 7, 9 triple that gives us a 1 here, and resolves this, places a 3 in this region. My last two digits in this region are going to be 4 and 8, so there's an 8 there and a 4 there. Now I know that 4 in this region is in one of these two cells, because these three 4s see the majority of the region. So this is very similar to this up here, where I have four digits in a row that don't include a four in them. So they're either five, six, seven, eight, or six, seven, eight, nine. In this case, they can't be six, seven, eight, nine, because the low digit has to be in one of these cells, but there's already a six in that column. So they must be five, six, seven, eight. They have to go that way around because of this five. That's going to resolve a whole bunch of stuff up above. That can't be six or seven, so that's nine. And I think I get the entirety of the top two thirds of the grid. Yes, I do. And I'm just going to do a little bit of classic Sudoku to clean up. This can only be a 3 or a 6, and there's a 6 in the column. Uh, these, that has to be a 1. This has to be a 2. These digits are going to be 4 and 9, and that's now a 5, a 6, a 3, a 4, and a 3, and a 7. And that is how you solve Philip Newman's lovely The Absent-Minded Commuter. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. The link to check it out yourself is in the description below this video. And I'll see you again in three days.